Right, so we've left it for 15 minutes, right, and it's been on our what we found as being a, a worst case scenario, it seemed, for 10% mark space ratio. And um, our cycle count of 100 is supposed to be 100 hertz, so we actually measured just to make sure it is actually 100. And as you can see, we can. Uh, where is it? So there, isn't it? Uh, we we measure the actual frequency and it says it's 10 milliseconds, which is 100 hertz. Our temperature seems steady at 32. I can't. I think it was 34 before, wasn't it? So we've got a temperature drop. Definitely. Yeah. Motor's spinning. Now then, I always thought the worst case scenario was just before it's turning. So let's just drop the mark down until it just stops. I think that's it. Yeah, it's just sort of turning there slowly. Right, which is 4% uh, on this one. Right, let's just uh, recheck. Yeah, well the tone hasn't changed. Let's see what the actual... I want to see what the space is in milliseconds. So that's that. And so we've got 0.4 milliseconds. Now that's a 4% mark space ratio on 100 hertz, which means it should be 0.4 milliseconds. Okay, that's four hundredths of 10. Okay, uh, the temperature's dropping, so it looks like the 10% thing is our worst case scenario. Let's just uh, speed it up again. Oops, that's down. So we'll go for. Uh, okay, let's take it up to the full speed. So that's ninety nine percent. Okay, and yeah, pretty much. Uh, also, previously our Bull fifty eights, uh, they were getting a bit warm, and the reason why was because we were running the controller at forty k. Okay, so they were actually spending an awful lot of time transitioning <laughs> in uh, doing the gate, you see. So they were getting hot, but now now we're on a low frequency of 100 hertz. These are stone cold again. So the whole circuit here is stone cold. This guy is obviously dropping in temperature. Bearing in mind, of course, there's no heat sink whatsoever on this thing. I mean, we are running at 12 volts, so that's not going to be a great amount. And I think the maximum that power pack can put out is in the region of 3 amps. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's 36 watts. So we're only really running at a maximum of 36 watts, which isn't a great amount. The uh, <laughs> this is a 500 watt motor, um, but I mean, as soon as you start putting your finger on the shaft, it's the power pack goes mental. Uh, yeah. So uh, on full, yeah, you can see. Look, it's dropped 30. So it looks like it verifies that our it's uh, got 50% mark space. Oops, to 25. There we go, it's 50% mark space. And as you can see, it's a very clean mark space ratio now. Yeah, I am really chuffed. That circuit really, really works. And we really do get good gating. And obviously, as soon as we put a heat sink on that, I don't think we'll get it above zero. <laughs> Temperature difference. Yeah. Oh, that's really good, and we, our LED's working now because we've got a 10k resistor on from the Arduino feed. It's not killing the... Uh... Yeah, so that's the circuit, basically. That's a driver circuit. Uh, needs the split rail supply to work, of course, but that's a given. Uh, this is actually working on the low side IGBT uh, in the circuit. Uh, so, in the actual circuit, I don't know if I showed this before, but it's actually uh, that one that we're testing. This one isn't connected, and that one's the one we're testing. We've got the full circuit. We haven't got the uh, the diodes and the SCR, so we need to order those. And uh, we haven't got our uh, software glitch transistor in either. But other than that, the circuit's correct. Oh, and the, we've got a 10K resistor in there instead of 4.7, and we have an LED attached to that on the uh, on this side which is a one is it 1k yeah we've got a 1k is it there you see a 1k resistor and, a, and an LED and there's our 10k resistor on the feed so you've got a 1k here to ground 
Yeah, but other than that, fine. And this negative supply here, in our case, is actually 12 volts, the same as the positive. So the, the, potential, the potential difference is 12 volts on both sides. So we've got 24 volts across it, which of course this is switching, although that can switch hundreds. So the other test to do now, to confirm that it works correctly, is to replace that with our 500 watt light and stick in our uh, Prius battery at 300 volts and uh, just see how it works because we've got a current limiting circuit here which means that we shouldn't have any issues with current this thing is may, may get a little bit lukewarm I don't know because it hasn't it's having to dissipate but it's only dissipating milliamps you know even if it is in its and it will be in its linear region but it's more a question of um, the potential difference across it at that point but yeah it works 29 degrees 30 degrees dropping again a very very clean PWM yeah, I mean that's that's a hundred hertz, and the rise and fall time is ten th one ten thousandth of that. <laughs> so that's a very quick switch, and we've got it. We've got our stuff now. So what we need to do now is build a whole controller. We can certainly use it on our milk float control uh, on our milk float motor to uh, to operate that. But we've got to replace the Arduino because we've blown the ADCs. Oh, nice. Okay. Ta-da.